to him. Okay, I'm talking to Dr. Reese Holter, and uh, he's an award-winning broadcaster and author of The Incomparable Honeybee. Hi, Reese, are you there? I sure am. Okay, good. I mean, the, the, the whole honeybee thing's been in the news a lot recently in the UK, and I take it in America. Um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions. So I'm going to start by saying um, if there's been a body of work that's been published saying two-thirds of insects that pollinate plants are, van are vanishing. A lot of the research is pointing to certain pesticides that are being used by companies. Um, this research is open to scrutiny, but the companies involved produce their own research, which they won't let uh, be publicly scrutinised, saying that it's, it's not the case. Um, the, the British chief scientific advisor, Professor Ian Boy Boyd, concedes that the issue is finely balanced. Um, should we take a precautionary principle and ban these pesticides? Absolutely. This has gone on for a couple decades. Over the last five years, we have lost more than a quarter of a trillion domesticated honeybees around the world. These neonicotinoids are lethal poisons that cause the wild and the domesticated honeybees to lose their minds, which means they can't find their hive, and they shake to death. It's analogous to the diseases of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. We have seen study after study, peer-reviewed from France, from the UK, from the United States of America, and elsewhere, that are strongly implicating the overuse of these poisons. We are pounding about five billion pounds of these poisons into the biosphere every year, and more than a quarter of them are neonicotinoids. We've got to ban them. At the rate we're going, I mean, if we lose all these insects, how are we going to pollinate all the plants? I mean, that's, this is a sort of a domestic issue. What we see in China and some other countries with the unacceptable levels of toxicity, human beings are having to hand pollinate uh, plants. It's, it, there's no way that a burgeoning population in the UK and around the globe can even fathom losing the pollinators. The, the honeybees and the wild bees carry the lion's share of pollinating over 205,000 plants on earth. They do about 80% of that. And as for our foods and our clothes, the cotton, and uh, our medicines, we're done as a, as a population of over 7 billion people without the bees. The, enough is enough. This is like a prize fighter being beaten in a, uh, a televised match in a corner, and there's a referee standing there. When is, when is the referee going to jump in? And it has to be now. Wow. And... At the moment, it looks like the government are standing back. They don't want to ban these pesticides. Uh, should, we, should we impose fines on these businesses to repair the damage if it transpires that they are the culprits? I mean, just saying we didn't know, is that, good enough? Is that a good enough response? No, it isn't. And, and, and here's, here's the rub. All, all the money on planet Earth is never going to bring back the wild bees that we, have, we are losing, that we have lost, and at a moment in time when the environment becomes so toxic for the bees, which are the modern-day canary in the coal mine, it, we have to act. It, it's you know human beings are uh, we think about the the almighty dollar the or the pound which is fine but it, when the milk is spilled 
you can't put it back into the container. We, we've got to stop this. And, and there's got to be punitive charges. And I, I'm not talking about a couple million pounds or a couple billion. I'd like to see a trillion pound fine and break these companies, break them for once and for all. I'm breaking the law of EK side. Oh, yeah. And just finally, this is the last question. What can we do as individuals to make a difference? Because that's obviously the big one that everyone is kind of powerless in the face of all this. Well, we're coming into spring, so the, the most important thing for all, uh, all homeowners is please don't use any uh, uh, herbicides or insecticides or miticides or fungicides in your garden. Please uh, consider, uh, falls well, there isn't a, a deluge like last summer, but when the sun does come out, the insects need to drink. So take a little water bowl, put a bowl of water out in the yard, replenish it each day, and uh, please plant any, of, any and all of the native flowers, the yellows and the blues, and that makes a safe source of, of nectar in your in your yard we're encouraging families to uh, this earth day and earth week to plant at least one fruit bearing tree in in your yard it becomes a safe uh, source of nectar and pollen and a food source for your family and for your neighbors fantastic thanks Reese. all the way from san francisco yes and you know best-selling author of the incomparable honeybee thanks very much for talking to me thanks mate